We've made a lot of videos about different airplanes on this channel, new and old. But what we haven't talked about is when they die. These planes have a due date and they will eventually retire, so they have to go in the grave. If it doesn't go to the grave, it has to be a very special plane and it goes to the museum. And that's for a few of them, the rest of them go to the junkyard. Remember this name, 309 AMARG, and that stands for, for the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group. This is the biggest graveyard in the world, but that's an airplane graveyard. All the airplanes that come here are military aircraft. Passenger aircrafts have their own graveyard. These get parted out, but it's a lot more complicated for these than passenger aircrafts. We have to get to Tucson, Arizona to get to 309 AMARG. Right now, there is more than 4,000 aircrafts parked in this area. 800 people work here and their job is to inspect these airplanes to figure out how to get rid of it. Should they rebuild it? Should they part it out or sell the parts? Even though these airplanes are practically dead, but the value of all these is about $35 billion. Let's look at the history of AMAR. This graveyard started after World War II, and that's because in World War II, the US had a lot of junk aircrafts and they had to get rid of it. And that was the reason they took over a giant piece of land so they can park these aircrafts. That's why they went to in the middle of Tucson, Arizona, bought a thousand hectares of land and parked these aircrafts. If you want to know how big a thousand hectares are, you have to put 2,000 football fields next to each other. The weather of this area is extremely important on why they took this place. Very dry and hot. And it has a very hard ground. And that means no moisture so nothing rusts. And it's not soft for the airplane to sink into the ground. They just made the land flat and the airplanes move around. And it's very rarely rains here. You could find all types of US military aircrafts here. I mean, look at the B-52s. Some of them are parted out. In the middle right there, you see some F-15. On the back side, you see some C-135s. So how did these aircrafts get here? Do they bring them with trailers? No, all airplanes fly here. And most of them, it's going to be their last flight ever. There's really no plans of airplanes that land here. They can fix an airplane in two weeks and have it fly again. They can also dismantle it in two weeks and part it out, but they could leave it in a corner and leave it there for 50 years. There are a lot of airplanes here from the Vietnam War and they still haven't had time to touch it and it's not important for them. When they plan on leaving the aircraft, they don't just leave it. First, they spray a special compound. That's a protective layer of the aircraft, and it doesn't let anywhere rust. They close every hole of the airplane. They close all the windows with a special tape, and obviously covered the engines up. They take the fuel out, and also all the other fluids like the oil. That's because they don't want anything to stay in the airplane, just in case they want to fix it up again. They put a special white tape over the windows that reflects light and it doesn't allow the light to go inside. Arizona is a desert and it's extremely hot. If they allow the sunlight to enter this cabin, it will destroy it very quickly. It's also good to know that every airplane is tied down to the ground. And that's because if some heavy winds comes along, they don't push these airplanes around and hit each other with it. But how does this airplane graveyard actually make money? Let's just say they don't have any issues making money. Most of these airplanes you see are still being flown in other countries and they need the parts. 
like Egypt, orders a fuel gauge of a C-130, and they have plenty of that. If they have approval from the government, they could send that country the part. They could part out all the airplanes except the F-14, because the only country other than the US that has F-14s is Iran, and they don't want the parts to get to Iran, and that is why it was not recycled like the other planes. So now we realize that this graveyard sells between four to 7,000 parts a year. And that means they make millions sending different parts to different countries around the world. If you didn't know, the US still have some of these planes in service. And obviously, they will order parts from this place as well. Like no other country has B-52s. So obviously, the US is the only one that orders it. They do another thing in this place. If they see an airplane that's actually not that bad and it's clean, they will rebuild it and put it back in service. Like for example, the F-16s that come here, it's very rare for them to get parted out because if they want to buy a new one, it's extremely expensive. It is true that rebuilding is extremely expensive. Like for example, if you want to rebuild an F-16 wing, it will take 20,000 man hours, and that's just one wing. Airplane parts are extremely fragile, and one small crack on one part that nobody can see can cause something catastrophic. And that is why every metallic piece enters a special liquid, and the liquid identifies hairline cracks if it has it. If any aircraft wants to go back in service, they have to run through some special tests from every direction. If everything is in order, they could give it to the army. But don't think that happens to every airplane. This is a small percentage of these planes. More than 90% of these planes get parted out and go inside boxes to be shipped to different countries. This was the biggest graveyard of aircrafts. You might ask, what about passenger aircrafts? There are different companies that part out passenger aircraft, and the laws to part out military aircraft is much more different and not everybody has access to it. Any aircraft that's at the end of its life, they contact these companies, and they come and take care of business. 